Lloyd Vehicle Consulting t-shirts, mugs and stickers are now available. Please click on the Google link in the description below to purchase your very own. Good afternoon. Today is the 2nd of May still and I'm here at the Popham Flying and Classic Car Show at Popham Airfield near Basingstoke in Hampshire. And this is a part five of a slightly shambolic shuffle. We try not to get things wrong, we try not to have wind noise, we try not to fall over, but we fail at all those things, I'm afraid. That's why we call them the shambling shuffles. 1967 MGB GT, standard car with a few additional fittings, it says here. Ooh, plenty of uh, rallies and things it's been on. Triumph TR6. So we have quite an early one, that's a 69 only because that's a 68, 69 registration which came out at 69, so very early one. Ford Escort RS uh, 1800, this is actually a, an Irish registration this one, um, from the Republic of Ireland. And I don't know when this was uh, made, so I don't even know if they had an RS 1800 in this country. Maybe it's just an Irish specification only. But yeah, red plate gives that away. 1990 to 1991, Peugeot 205 1.9 GTI with the wheel removed for some reason. I wonder what that is. Triumph Herald with the uh, rookie dash in it. 1966 Herald 1200 convertible. This looks a bit like an MG TD with green interior. Interesting. Yeah, it's TD. 1950. A bay window Volkswagen camper. Seventy-one, seventy-two registration. Mark II Golf. Uh, Eighty-six, eighty-seven registration on this one. I don't know what specification this is actually viewed. It's not a not a GTI. Maybe it's a driver or something. I don't know. I can't get round the back of it without knocking chairs over, so I won't do that, viewers. Another Beetle, many, you know, loads here. Uh, 6970 registration. It's a 1300. Ooh, 1968 to 69 Daimler V8 250. Luxury version of a Jaguar Mark II. These were the the last variation I think of the Mark II that were made with the original bumpers and things because Jaguar was switched to the uh, 240 and 340 later on sort of despect Mark IIs. Ooh, is that a Sunbeam rapier or something? I, I forget about these things. Mm, it could be a Talbot 90, I don't actually know. One second, views. Just changed hand to make it easier for myself to film. Um, what have we got here? 1986, Austin 10 4 Sherman Saloon. Yes, good giveaway. It's not not a seven because it's got, it's got um, four doors and not two. 1936, Austin 10 Colwyn Cabrio. Of course, you know if you didn't have a standard saloon, you could have two doors in your ten. Uh, this was like a bigger one, a twelve or something. I don't know. Another MGTD, circa sort of 1950 thereabouts. What is this? Big American thing. Is this, a, is this a Willys or something? It's a Willys Knight. Be sort of uh, 20s, I imagine, that one. Another Willys Knight here, a little bit earlier, probably. Um, Bentley Mark VI Special, I think. I actually, I actually, actually I, I don't say this too loudly, but I actually have one of these as my um, wedding car. This is... um. 
a very popular thing. You make a Bentley special, you get rid of the, the, the bodywork of your um, Mark VI or R-type Bentley and you make it to do a special like this. So it would be sort of late 40s, early 50s, I think. 1966. Sunbeam Alpine. 1969-70. Triumph 1300. Wonderful. We like these views. We like these a great deal. Chevrolet, I think this is an Astro. From what I remember. Yes, yeah, Chevrolet Astro. Um, is that an N? Yes, it's an N, so 95 nice registration. Austin Healey 3000, that's, a, that's not an E on the end. No, it's a B, so 64. <laughs> I think this is a Mark III. Not quite based over views, but we're getting there. We'll see more of those interiors soon. Yeah, it's a Mark III. 1966 Ford Mustang. Again, showing off actually reasonable practicality for a sort of sporty car like this. 1978-79 MGB Roadster. This would have had the chrome bumpers on it originally, but um, they've been uh, just removed, <laughs> and now it's just completely bumperless. Which is the way some people like them, and they have improved the headlamps as well. 1972-3. Again, how much of the original car is here? Not sure. 1990 1991 Mazda MX-5. It's a bit of 1.6, I should think. Very early NA1, uh, UK car. Two thousand and four to five Volkswagen T5 Transporter. I think this one would be. 1989 to 90, Volkswagen T3 Transporter, the Atlantic, so probably an American one. Left hand drive is a bit of a giveaway, and good to see that Porsche Rello wheels still fit all these different um, Volkswagen Transporters and Vanagons, which Vanagon was the name in America, so it is, it is an American import. Another T5 Transporter, don't know what you cut a personal plate. Ooh, a Bristol. Oh, now we're talking viewers. This is the sort of thing that we like very much, even though it has Morris Marina internal door handle. But it's got a beige leather interior and wood, so how could we po possibly complain? A beautiful, beautiful Bristol. And there is the battery compartment in the wing. I think the other side has a, a sort of stowage area. So it's 74 Bristol 411. Very, very nice feels. That's exactly the sort of thing that I like. Very good. 1959. Aston Martin DB24 Mark III. And this is the type of Aston that Bond drives in a novel of Goldfinger. So there we are. Plenty of room for all your stuff on your spy mission. Another Aston here. DB9 Volante 2011, 6 litre V12. Mm, mm, mm. Hand built in England with final inspection by Paul Bolifo. Thank you, Paul Bolifo, for your final inspection. That's very nice. DB7 Stratstone Mayfair. Oh. So this will be registered in 1999. It's only covered 9,400 miles. Mmm, that's very nice views. I'd like to have a go at a nice DB7, a complete with its Mazda 3 to 3F rear lights. 1993 1994 Volvo 940 with leather interior, very posh. I did actually drive one of these on the uh, channel viewers. It's actually on No Budget Reviews from March 2021. A very late one, but sort of a celebration model. More miners. 1969-70 Morris Meyer two-door saloon with a beige interior. I doubt that's leather though. I don't think miners came with leather. Another sort of bright 70s car here. 
quite original, this, this Beetle. Uh, 1976 to 1977. Beetle. It's a bit FTO. Don't know what year it is, probably about 98. And then, uh, I can't remember what sort of Mustang this is called, but it's about 95. Bertie the Beetle. Bertie's not got an engine um, size on uh, on the bonnet. Another beetle here with the well, the, the earlier rear window in this one. 1970-71 registration. It's the second one I've I've seen with the, the clock inside the steering wheel. How interesting. I wonder how you adjust that if you want to at the right time. Oh yes, a wide registration R50 Mini. Yes, we knew we were going to come across one of these at some point, viewers. 2001 R50 Mini Cooper press car. Um, Mr. Richardson Furious Driving has uh, a wire registration Mini Cooper in red as well. His one, though, was supplied to a dealership for sort of technical training and things like that, um, as opposed to the press. But yes, these are getting quite valuable now, the wire registration Mini R50s. And I do understand that. 1992 1993 BMW 3 Series E30 convertible. Obviously, made for a bit later after the E30 went out of production in 1991. This is a 325i, so it's the one everybody wants. Interesting. Oh, it's left the, the window open for me as well. It's got an M Sport steering wheel. Excellent. A couple of MG ZRs here. One of them, I don't know what year that is, that's a preface this one, 170. I presume that's uh, got a bit more uh, kind of power than the standard uh, BBC 160. 2004 here, this is a, actually a pre-facelift but it must be a late registration. Um, I presume this is the uh, BBC one as well but I, I don't know. Um, sometimes they say 160 on the back of it, sometimes they don't. Ooh, Vauxhall Chevette with some extended wheel arches on it. I do have a review of an HSR coming up on the channel actually quite soon, viewers. Um, this is not, I don't know what engine this is actually in here. It's not the, it's not the Slant 4, is it a red top or something? I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's too early for an HS or something because it's a 76 or something registration. Subaru Brat, uh, 1991 registration. I don't know if we've, have we seen this car before at Brooklyn or something. Because there's not a lot of these around. Maybe it is the same one. I, I forget now. I've filmed so many cars over the last few weeks, I've forgotten. Um, 1994, 1995 Mini. Sorry, 1974, 1975 Mini. I do apologize for you. It's obviously getting late in the day when I can't actually remember things properly. Um, that's not got the original interior in it. Right, so we shall continue. Uh, I'm parked today with the Test Valley Motor Enthusiasts and... Uh, at some point I'm going to be having my lunch, uh, although I'm too busy chambotting and shuffling, so my car is here. Although the lady at the entrance tried to tell me it was too new to come in, which is rubbish because I've seen like 2011 plate cars in here today. Uh, Mark 2 Jaguar 3.8. Again, the standard of the cars that testified the motor enthusiast is very, very high. 1972-73 Hillman Imp. This one looks like a very fast Imp. Another Walsley Hornet like uh, the one we saw sort of earlier on. 6089 registration, quite a late one. Complete with a colour-coded picnic set. Excellent. Yeah, it's Mark III. Early... Stag, I think this is a 72, it could be 71. I, I, I've been told, but I always forget. Um, this one has had a different gear knob put on it. The wood has been changed colour. It's got extra lights on it or something. Very nice. Of course, there's this Rolls Royce 2025 from 1929. We actually saw this the first time. I think it was um, actually uh, at the Hitty Arboretum. Uh, in Romsey in 2019. Another one of these late Morris Miners, this is a 70, 172 registration, so a very late one. 
Uh, so that's Valley Road Enthusiast logo. MGA, we saw this actually at the uh, drive it day, this particular car. Because um, we uh, we did a we tried to the last bit of a drive it day that they had. 1968 to 69 minor thousand traveller. There's the later steering wheel on it, without the sort of metal bits. Mark II console 375 Deluxe. I can't remember if this is a, a low or a high line one. I, I forget about these things here, I'm afraid. This is the incredibly late um, MGB GT that uh, one of the club members owns. It's a limited edition model, but this wasn't registered, I don't think, until 1982. Sorry, sorry, 83. I don't know why, <laughs> um, but, um, but it just hung around for a long time, but it did. So this is one of the last MGBs ever made. It's registered in 1983. Absolutely and utterly extraordinary. There is a bit of an early, earlier one here. This is a 77, 78 registration. Another rubber bumper MGB GT. And yes, mmm, Lotus Europa. I think this is the twin cam, so this won't have a Renault engine in it. It'll have the Lotus twin cam, special O37, Europa Special. Yes, I think this is after the um, the uh, Renault engines. Right, let's uh, venture down that way and see some of the other Test Valley Motor Enthusiast cars. 1968 to 9 Triumph Herald 1360. I keep being told which uh, year this is and I always forget. Um, I do apologise to the chap who owns it because he's always telling me I always forget. 1964 Austin Heath 3000 um, Mark 3. Lovely kind of two-tone um, red and white. 1966 Humber Scepter. This was the only one of the uh, Singer Vogue, Hilton Supermix and Humber Scepter Trio to actually retain the original roof line when they got to the 1725cc cars. So again, it's another one I'd like to try to try. Hopefully at some point I might be able to. Very, very late. Um, Mark II Ford Escort here. This is a 1300E, so it's uh, top of the range for luxury in this. So we've got, yes, we've got sort of leather steering wheel and wood and all kinds of things in it under the vinyl roof. Rather nice. Again, I, I can't remember the year of this uh, Riley 1.5. I think this is an earlier one, but um, I could be totally wrong about that. Get another Test Valley Motor Enthusiast badge. MGA, I think this is an earlier one, so be for probably sort of mid to late 50s. Most minor 1000 convertible. Now, this has the earlier steering wheel in it, and it also has the later wipers, so. It's after 1962. It'll be a 1098 cc version. Nineteen sixty-eight Ford Mustang, which is owned by uh, John, who is the club chairman. I imagine a lot of you will have seen seen this in many of the videos we've sort of done, because of course he's the chairman, so he's around quite a lot. Uh, Lomax, Citroen uh, two CV based. Uh, kit car and someone's put a funny little gear lever in there and also replaced the engine and motor guzzi unit oh this is nice to it to 3 Ford Granada 2.6 gear. I wasn't aware that they made the gears this early. Perhaps that badge has been sort of put on something. It's very nice anyway. Look at that page for law interior. It's also a left hand drive. That's fascinating. Uh, clown shoe BMW Z3 M Coupe. I don't know what year this is. Maybe about 2000, something like that. It's around that. 
I did drive a Z3 recently, but it was the uh, just a three litre. Lost in seven here, London plate, uh, B20s, I should think this thing. Again, also rather nice. 1989 Ford Fiesta. This is quite a basic one, it's not a popular or anything like that, but it's not far off the bottom of the range. It's a 1.1 LX. Apparently it's for sale. I know somebody who's very fond of Mark III Ford Fiesta, so I might send uh, that um, over to him. Another one of these uh, Chevy pickups. Don't know what year this is. Is this a number 3100? Maybe somebody in the comment section will actually tell me, because I don't really know. Oh, sorry, it's an Apache from 1959. Always worth looking at the information before you make videos. That's something I should, uh, you know, tell myself to do a bit more. 1969 um, MG CGT. It was built in 68, but it was uh, registered 69, so it hung around for an awfully, awfully long time. Of course, the uh, 3 litre C series of this and not the, uh, the, the B series and so many other of the MG models. Wow, it's a Ford Classic convertible. Is this by Crayford or something? I haven't seen a Ford Classic in a long time. You see the, uh, um, you see the uh, Quantico Capris, but not so much for Classics. This will be between 1961 and 63. That's what it'll be. And it's got a very nice beige leather interior too. How extraordinary! We like that kind of thing, dear. We, uh, we do like that. I oh, know it is a, it is a Capri. It's not a Classic. I'm really confused now, viewers. I'm really, really confused. Help. Run away. Run away. Right. Uh, 1958, I think. Um, MGZA. Man, I, I, I've seen this car before, actually. I saw it in a pub in Winchester a while ago. I think it's the ZA because it's got the smaller rear window. The ZB had a, had a larger one. Marcus? Man, Mantara 400 Spider, very nice. Ooh, I don't think I've ever seen one of these. It's a '96. Very nice sort of biscuit-coloured uh, interior as well. Bits from Fords, of course, like a lot of um, low-production cars of the time. And a very early Mini Moat. This is a '60, '70, '68 registration. Kind of sort of prisoner spec. This. I mean, there's just nothing in here. It's absolutely nothing. <laughs> I mean, if you were in the rear, like, if you kind of fall out, that's your problem. <laughs> Crazy. 1975-76 uh, Mini. This particular one, um, the grill on it, I think, is often... Early car, it's only an 850. Wow, that's, that's pretty special. 1990 Ford Escort XR3i. So... If, very late one of these actually because the new model came in um, new model came, came in in 1990 as well so it's a very late Mark IV Escort Ford Cortina Mark II in a sort of purple shade it's quite nice while he's a tax impost just brilliant uh, 1968 very good 1600E yes of course and some Interesting sort of louvers on there as well. I don't know if this is a traveller or a countryman. It depends if it's a an Austin or a Morris Mini. If it's a Morris, so it would be a traveller. Uh, so 60, 768 registration. Hang on, it's an Austin grill with a Morris badge. I'm really confused now, viewers. Uh, Jensen Scepter 3, so... 1973-74 registration, yes, with a beige leather interior and wood. Mm, I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. Oh, another interceptor. I'll have a look at this one too. Uh, so, Jensen Interceptor SP, 7.2 litre. Very good. Yes. 
Uh, yeah, 70, 273 registration on this one. What an early Jetson Healy. I think these came out 72, it's a 72, 73 registration on this. So the only one's got the four speed, four speed gearbox in it. Well, they've sort of Vauxhall bits in there, I've read some other cars, but of course the engine was from Lotus. It's sort of a bit like the Vauxhall Slot floor, but not really, it's, it's complicated. Uh, another Jetson Interceptor SP, this is a 73. Oh, I love this colour of his, that is ever so nice. It's a very, very nice colour. And of course it's a... Thank you very much, SP Mark III. And the beige over interior. Beautiful. With a vinyl roof. Mm, I've not seen too many interceptors recently, but it's, it's one of my favourites. 1990 91 facelifted Volvo 740 GL. By the time this car was made, this was um, being replaced by the 940. And uh, yes, it's, um, it's like an award winning car, which is very good. Oh, Gilburn. 72 73 registration. I think this is the Invader. They stopped production in 73, so quite a late Gilburn. I forget the. Uh, I think it's an Invader. It's probably with, with the Essex v, uh, 3 litre V6. So those are. Um, Mark 1 Escort Rear Lights, 1970-71 Triumph TR6, very nice, nice straight 6, ooh, and some Capris as well, excellent, 1983 Ford Capri 2.8 Ejection Turbo by Janspeed, oh yes please, this would be excellent, the wheels even say Janspeed on them. I have driven a, a 2.8 injection Capri, but it was um, an early four-speed model in forest green, single tone. 1986 to 87 Capri 2.8 laser, quite a late one actually. This because the production of Capri finished December 86, so I don't know if it's an 86 or 87, but. Um, Yes, what's that massive, massive kind of assembly on the top of the top of the Pinto there? I'm sure somebody would tell me. Um, another late Mark III here. This is a, another turbo one. And that interior is very individual. I've not seen one like this before, actually. V6 turbo, so I bet that's fast. Wow. 1979 to 80. Mark III Capri 2 point two litre gear with the vinyl roof and some rather fetching looking seats. I don't oh. think we've got any leather there in that one. 1987-88 Capri 280 Brooklands. Now as I said production of these stops uh, December 86, but the latest Capri I've seen registered is actually on a G plate from 1989. So they did sell them a bit later. I think they struggled to actually get rid of them for a time, but now, I mean, these are incredibly desirable cars. Really, really nice. Oh, it's a very early Capri 2.8 injection. It's, it's better, uh, even early, even more hydro. So this is probably, this has got a five speed gearbox in it, but this, this one, um, would have had originally a four-speed in it. Uh, so Essex Plate, it actually could be one that was owned by Ford themselves at the beginning. So 81, 82, like this one, TW again, an Essex Plate. So perhaps we've got two sort of Ford-owned cars originally here. And the Carla Check interior, of course. Very nice. Another 2-point injection over here in this... Um, it's sort a of classic colour that they came in at the time. There's the two-tone of blue over the uh, over the silver at the bottom. Yes, Professionals Annual from 1984. Very appropriate. Yes, this is the uh, five-speed, so I think this would be a special. Very nice viewers. So we've come to the end of part five. We'll just have a look at this uh, Chevrolet Camaro. Um, related to that Pontiac Firebird that we saw in one of the earlier parts, uh, Again, sort of 
78, 79, something like that. Very nice. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching this uh, slightly shambolic shuffle around um, the 2022 Pop and Flying Classic Car Show. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment below. And uh, we'll see you again in part six when I think we're finally going to finish getting around this show.